Climate protesters are taking radical action. In England, 80-year-old Sue Parfit illegally blocks oil shipments. In Berlin, Germany, it's a 20-year-old who's prepared to go to extremes. Carla Rochel and her fellow campaigners glue themselves to a highway. Sure, it's a bit crazy, but right now we just keep racing toward a climate catastrophe without seeing what's ahead. That's much crazier. Some of us have to keep shouting the alarm. Two generations fighting climate change. Both fear the war in Ukraine is diverting attention from the threat of global warming. Hello, hello, folks. <laughs> this could be one of Sue Parfit's last days of freedom. Lovely to see you. Once again, the 80-year-old retired pastor is facing court, this time for blocking a highway. Her trial begins today. First, she meets with other activists from her group. They all face up to two years in prison. I'm not blocking you, am I? When the government is failing in its duty to its citizens, then the only right place for a person of conscience is to be in prison. If I can't change the government, then I want, temporarily anyway, to opt out of being complicit with the government. Sue Parfit sees herself as part of a noble tradition of peaceful civil disobedience. For her, her actions are just. Oh, good, yes. We are defending ourselves when it's the government that's got to defend itself for its total non-action. We have to pierce through this absolute nonsense at some point and say it's not us that's guilty, it's the government that's guilty. Meanwhile, in Berlin, Carla Rochel is on the verge of breaking some laws herself. She and her group plan to block a highway ramp. They call themselves the last generation the last ones who can still stop human-made climate breakdown. But it's dangerous. The activists have to wait until the traffic stops. Plus, blockades make commuters and other drivers furious. I'd much rather be sitting in my room right now or at university this is not where I'd ever thought I'd be, but it feels right. I can tell it's changing something, that it can put in motion what we need right now. We need change across all areas, and a food rescue law is a really simple first step. The group gives us a video they made that shows what they mean. At night, they break into a supermarket. From the trash, they take out the food they think is still edible. The activists say this sort of waste is partly to blame for our warming planet. They want to see it banned. Instead, it's their own actions that are against German law. I can understand people who say it's far too radical and extreme. I think it's much more radical to dump a truckload of food into the trash every minute. When people see what we're demanding and when they look at the facts about what's hurtling towards us right now, I don't think there'll be any criticism of our demands. Carla and her fellow campaigners share a meal. The 20-year-old university student put her psychology studies on hold for her activism. Her parents weren't impressed at first, but now they support her. The fact is, there will be one-third less food in the world in 2045. A lot of harvests will fail because of drought. That will cause disastrous famines, including here in Germany. Billions of people will have to leave their homes and land. And it would be naive to think that in Germany we can just carry on like we are. 
Everyone around the table shares this bleak, frightening outlook. Concern for the planet's future is also what drives Sue Parfit here in the south of England. Normally, she hardly leaves her house and her beloved garden. Walking is difficult for her. We're not doing it because we want to do it. We're not doing it because we're selfish people. I mean, <laughs> that doesn't really come into it. We don't want to do these things. We want our children and our grandchildren to have a future. That's why we're doing these things. And they don't have a future at the moment. She joined the ranks of radical environmental activism a few years ago, after the death of her husband. If he were still alive, she says, she wouldn't do it. He would have worried too much about her. But Sue sees herself and her generation as bearing a particular responsibility. I cannot understand, really, why other older people aren't. I mean, a lot of older people are involved in this campaign, but everybody, rather than sitting doing your knitting or your garden or stroking your cat, um, needs to be out there, sitting on motorways or whatever is required at the time. In the middle of the night, Sue and her group's latest action begins. They call themselves Just Stop Oil. The plan is to occupy a terminal and prevent distribution to gas stations. Sue is there from the start. Our main ask is for the government to not explore or excavate for any new fossil fuels, whether that's coal mines or oil fields or gas. The tankers aren't getting through. Fellow activist Laura Norton tries to explain the reasoning behind the protest. It's an impossible task. If all the renewables, which have got planning permission already in this country, were fast-tracked and put in, into use, we could cut our dependence on Russia, Russian fuel completely. For Sue and the other activists, the war in Ukraine only drives home the urgency to move away from fossil fuels. For the British government, the war is a reason to open up new drilling in the North Sea. But that's an argument Sue doesn't accept. The whole idea that we must be exploring for fossil fuels and we must be uh, going out and looking for new oil fields to be independent. Yes, let's be independent, but let's do it through renewables. Hour after hour, the retired pastor blocks the path of a tanker. She spent a long time mentally preparing herself for this moment, including with prayer. It's important to trust the others in the group completely. Everyone is dependent on each other. I've got a camping chair, and that's a, I always take that with me because I can't stand for very long, so I have to sit. So, uh, yes, it's, it could be much worse. Anyway, it doesn't matter what it's like, we have to do it. And however hard it is, we must do it. <laughs> On the same day, a total of 10 oil facilities are blocked throughout the UK. Sue's group is near London, where rush hour traffic is badly disrupted. The tanker drivers are especially annoyed. There's people that need to live in for work, earn money. If the petrol tankers can't get to the petrol gauge, what else can we do for the cars and that? That's, and I think the police officers should pull them out of the way and let all the lorries through. That's it. Bless their hearts, give them a cup of tea, they look cold. <laughs> See you later. It takes 12 hours for the police to finally clear the road. Sue is taken into custody.
She has to spend the night alone in a cell. In Berlin, Carla Rochel's group has glued themselves to the road. They want to make it as difficult as they can for the police and disrupt traffic for as long as possible. The officers are careful while removing the protesters so the young people don't get injured. It upsets people beyond belief. It especially upsets the political world and the status quo. It's clear that this is a way we can put pressure on our government to finally protect our food and our lives. In comparison, the Berlin protest against food waste doesn't last long. After just over an hour, Carla and the others are detained and spend several hours in police custody. It's the day of the verdict in London. Sue Parfit has a suitcase with her. She may have to go straight from the court to prison. Guilty. I'm guilty of many things in my life, actually, but I don't think I'm guilty of what the court says I'm guilty of at all. No, no. I think we needed to be there. We need to be in places that people notice. We need to cause a minimum, sadly, of disruption. Uh, and we need the government to take note of it. They will eventually, because things will become so bad they can't but to take note. Much better they do it now than wait until it's almost too late. The verdict, guilty. A two-month suspended sentence means no jail time. But even if she does have to go to prison one day, Sue Parfit is committed to her climate activism. Yeah.